happy new year. It is January 11th and we are launching a brand new season here on What Laura Likes. We're trying to do a whole new thing here where we're going to have seasons and I'm excited to launch this one. We are talking today about being called to be a saint. I remember the first time I heard this, I was listening to Catholic radio for the first time in the fall of 2017 and I heard the phrase, be a saint, what else is there? by Patrick Coffin and it completely changed my life. Until 2017, I didn't know that we were called to be saints and maybe you don't either. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what is a saint, why we should be striving to be a saint, and then how we can add practices in our lives to make that happen. I do want to introduce myself for those of you who are new. My name is Laura and I'm a wife to my best friend. We've been married for 15 years and I have two kiddos Chloe who's 11 and Neil who's 8 and we homeschool We're also in the military and right now we are stationed in Germany So that's been interesting and on this channel we talk a lot about Catholicism But also the vocation of marriage which includes homemaking and motherhood and then finally some homeschooling videos as well Okay, okay. You now back to sainthood. What is sainthood? And what is it not? So sainthood does not mean that we have to be a mystic or a priest or a monk or a nun or have some kind of huge act for God. Being a saint means doing two things. It means doing the duties of our life well and it means accepting what comes from God in and around us and from other people with absolute surrender. The whole point of life is to become a saint and to be a saint means to be some a soul who goes to heaven. And we should all yearn for heaven. Heaven is our true birthday. And if you are not there, if you are not, you know, ready to die right now because you're not quite in love with Jesus Christ the way you should be, then that's okay because these practices I'm going to talk about will help you get there. And trust me, it is a journey. I am a cradle Catholic. I was baptized as a very little baby. I grew up in the church and it wasn't until 2017 when I started listening to Catholic radio that I say the scales fell from my eyes and I finally was able to understand what orthodoxy was and true church teaching and how much joy and peace comes when we live according to the, the laws of the church, according to Jesus Christ's laws. So what do all the saints have in common? What does that look like for each of us, whether we are married or single or we have consecrated our lives to Jesus? The thing is, is that we all need to work on practicing virtue and getting rid of vice. So let's jump in to how to do this. What are the practical aspects of living this life with the goal of you know coming into the place in heaven that god has set for us because god himself is love and he made us for love through love and we want to get to a place where he is our beloved and we love him we want to spend time with him and like I said, all these practices are going to help cultivate this relationship with God so that he is number one in your life, above your spouse, above your kids, above above your career, above the other relationships in your life, above any any task in this world that he is calling you to do. That is our goal because that is what a saint is, is a saint is somebody who is in love with God. All right, so number one is prayer. Prayer is talking with God. Prayer is being in communion with God. And so if you don't have a, a solid prayer life, if you're not spending every day, if not every hour, every moment in communion with God, talking with Him, you know, adoring Him, worshiping Him, praising Him, asking Him for, for help, then you're not going to get to this place of, tr of sainthood and true love because being in heaven is being in the beatific vision at all times and and loving him and worshiping and all these things. So some suggestions that I'll just walk you through kind of what I do in a day and then of course there's so much more you could be doing. But the first one is the morning offering. The morning offering is a prayer that centers your day towards God. So um, I will link a couple different examples below. I like the morning offering that includes language regarding indulgences. If you don't know what indulgences are, I will link my video up above. You can um, ask for indulgences for your own self to account for some of your temporal punishment due for your past sins, 
or you can also apply them for a soul in purgatory, which is a great act of charity. Um, and so the morning offer is something I do right when I wake up, as soon as I think about it. Um, our goal is to kind of wake up and immediately think of God. So ask for that grace. The next few are things like spiritual reading, reading daily scripture, journaling. I do have a whole video on journaling, which I will put up there. But the idea is that sometimes having a conversation with God is easier when we take pen to paper. Um, and so it's definitely something I would suggest trying if you haven't. It's definitely changed my prayer life. If you are somebody who naturally likes to write or have maybe kept a journal as a child, this would be a really great option as well. Then some formal prayers you can look into are the Angelus, which is traditionally prayed at the 6 a.m. hour, the noon hour, and the 6 p.m. hour. The easiest thing to do is just set an alarm on your phone and then Trust me, after a few weeks, you will learn the prayers by heart, and it's a really lovely prayer to pray through. Um, it's regarding the Annunciation and Mother Mary's words, and then, you know, focusing on the, in um, the incarnation of God. Another option, which I haven't really um, embraced yet, but all priests and religious do, is the Divine Office, which have different prayers throughout the course of the day, along with um, the Office of Readings every day. Now, it, this is going to depend on which calendar you follow. There's the traditional calendar, which was used before 1970, and then you have the new calendar, which most Catholics, if you're going to kind of a general Catholic church, you're going to be following the new calendar, which I'm guessing started in 1970 when everything kind of changed. And then, of course, we can't leave out the rosary. The rosary is a prayer that we, ideally you are praying every day. If you've never prayed the rosary before, you can step into the rosary. You can start with one decade um, and then build up to two and then three. You can follow along with a YouTube video. There's so many ways to cultivate the ro rosary. If you want if you need some like grace to help you pray every day, I suggest St. Louis de Montfort's book, the secret of the rosary because it is really good and it will really inspire you to want to pray the rosary more often. Um, at three o'clock is the Divine Mercy Hour. So this is from St. Faustina and her diary and, and we have the Divine Mercy image from this. And so every day at three o'clock, if the very, at the very least, say thank you, Jesus. Just, just let him know that you are so thankful for his sacrifice on the cross. Because the three o'clock hour, three o'clock is when Jesus Christ died on the cross. And that hour is called the hour of mercy. And this is when Jesus Christ opens up his mercy for us, for the whole world, more so than any other time. So this is the hour to petition after you thank him. And so a lot of people pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It's like a seven minute prayer. It's super easy to learn. Um, and again, just set your alarm for three o'clock and, and pray because these, what you're noticing is that if you set your alarm for different times of the day, you're, you're forced into pausing from our worldly endeavors and focusing in on God. And then also along with that, just invocations. So Jesus, Mary, Joseph, I love you, save souls. You can pray this throughout the day. You can pray this anytime you're having a moment of hardship or you're having a moment of struggle or you think about a family member or someone you love, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, I love you, save souls. It's all you have to do. And there's lots of invocations you can look up so that you can find something that really resonates with you. Another very popular one, especially among Eastern Catholics, is the Jesus Prayer. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I think, I hope I got that right. So um, that's another one that a lot of people like to, and there's even like some breathing you can do along with that if you suffer from anxiety or some kind of stress. And then finally, there's a prayer channel on YouTube called The Catholic Crusades and, or Catholic Crusader, I can't remember the exact title. I'll link it down below as well as anything else I've talked about. And they, um, you could listen to a new prayer every day and that just kind of builds up your repertoire of these formal prayers. And formal prayers are great. They're a great tool. They're a great gift from those 2,000 years of church history that we have um, to allow us to sometimes say the words that are in our heart, but that we that we are not quite coming together in a prayer on our own. And the nice thing about audio prayers is you can listen to a new one every day as you're cooking or cleaning. Sometimes I pray the rosary while I'm cooking or cleaning. You know, using YouTube and other sources where. Uh, where they're audio and they're no less meaningful because you're, you know, doing your duty in life, your state in life while praying. That's actually everything can be a prayer. 
And I'll, I'll link Father Mike's video down below where he talks about actively praying throughout the day and turning everything you do into a prayer. So the second thing that you can do to become closer to Jesus and to become a saint is to consecrate yourself to Jesus through Mary. And I have a video on this, so I'm just going to link it up below. Um, I'm going to link it up above as well as below. But ultimately, you are you know, pretty much giving yourself to Mary, becoming a slave of Mary, which I know can be sound funny, but trust me, if you, if you read St. Louis de Montfort, you'll understand. And there's a great book called Take It to the Queen, and I'll link that down below as well. And that one um, is a picture book, but it's a really great uh, explanation of this whole idea of consecration and to Jesus through Mary. The third thing you can do, which I really credit for a lot of my faith walk, is you can start wearing a, sac um, a sacramental. So I have on my miraculous medal here. This is also my brown scapular medal because I'm allergic to wool. But I've been wearing my miraculous medal since 2018, right before I started my channel. And the grace has just really poured in. Now, sacramentals are not, we're not superstitious people. Catholics are not supposed to be. That's a falsity. Um, there, there's no superpower in a sacramental. But the goal is that they diffuse grace and that by wearing them, you are able to reach sainthood more quickly than without. And to further um, encourage you to wear the Miraculous Medal, I do actually have a video on the Miraculous Medal, so I'll put that down below. But also, um, to encourage you to wear, to wear the Miraculous Medal, there, is a, there was a Jewish man who had an encounter with Mary, and he asked her what was her favorite prayer. And she, you know, was like, oh, I love them all, of course. And he said, yeah, yeah, but what's your favorite? And she said it was a Miraculous Medal prayer, which is, oh, Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. So that's another beautiful prayer that you can pray throughout the day. It's very easy to learn. The next thing that's really important in your faith walk if you're going to um, grow closer to Jesus and become a saint is mass and adoration. Now, I was so thankful that I found, I'm not joking, I found daily mass in 2018. I had no idea it existed. I mean, I must have at some level, but it wasn't, like I wasn't cognizant of it, cognizant of it. So I started going to daily mass in 2018 and it completely changed my life because the more you receive the Eucharist the more grace you're going to have and unless you're in mortal sin you are encouraged by Saint Pope Pius X to go to Mass daily and to receive daily and so just grace abounds in the Eucharist and so whether you're going to Mass or Adoration or both these are practices that are really going to propel you forward when it comes to becoming a saint, when it comes to letting go of attachment to sin, when it comes to loving Jesus Christ even more. And right along with that, we're talking about confession. Confession is one of those things where if you are active in your prayer life and you are active in this life, you're like, yes, I love confession. But if you are somebody who maybe hasn't gone to confession in a few years or even only goes like once a year, it can be a scary thing, it can be a big thing, and it can be something you kind of don't want to talk about. Um, I've been on both sides and even now, you know, prepping for confession is always a little bit like, do I have enough sins? Did I remember everything? You know, you ask the Holy Spirit, you ask Our Lady of Sorrows to help us to come up with what we need to confess. But there's so much grace in confession. If you have not been in the last three months, please make a point of going to confession this month. We're in a brand new year. No one knows what's going to happen in 2022. Now is the time to go to confession, to clean the soul, to become pure and white again. And the thing that's so amazing about confession, there's two. One is that when you go to confession, so you, you're you here and then you sin and you may fall here, especially if you're in mortal sin. If you're in mortal sin, you need to go like yesterday. Don't wait. Just go call your church today. But either way, you know, your sin, you kind of fall down here, right? But then when you go to confession, Jesus Christ doesn't just raise you back to where you were. He raises you above. So as you keep going to confession, you're actually gaining a higher and higher level of sanctification, which is the point when you're trying to be a saint. The second thing is that you are given specific grace for those sins that you confess. So if you are always struggling with a certain sin, the more you go to confession, the more grace you will be given for that specific sin. And again, this is all about trying to become perfect, which Jesus Christ calls us to in the Bible. Be perfect as my Father is perfect. Two more things. Um, and then we're going to wrap it up and give you some 
some advice on not to feel overwhelmed, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, I mentioned above spiritual reading, and I just kind of passed over it. But this is a practice that really I don't know how you grow in the spiritual life without some kind of spiritual reading. This could be a book written by a saint, a book written about Catholicism, a book written, you know, a book of stories about converts, or just something that is pointing you up to what is really important and keeping you kind of out of the mire of this world. Because we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And it's easy to get wrapped up in the concerns of the world. And when you do spiritual reading, it raises your heart, it raises your soul, it raises your thoughts to the to eternity, to the higher, more beautiful, more important thing. And by doing this daily, you will be kind of continually walking in that path of holiness and striving to stay on that narrow path. And then finally, this is like a no-brainer, right? Scripture daily. Who would have thought? Being in God's Word daily. And this is something that sometimes Catholics are not the best at, you know, because we have tradition and we have the Eucharist and we have all of these beautiful practices and prayers. Sometimes we, we don't spend enough time in God's Word. But God's Word, the Bible, is a love story to us. It's our history. It's, our, it's a walk through salvation. It's our way of getting to know Him. We're called to know, love, and serve God. Really, unless you read Scripture, how are you truly going to know, going to know God? And so, you can just open your Bible randomly. You can do a Bible in a year plan. You can decide that for, you know, this month I'm going to read Maccabees, and next month I'm going to read Luke, and the month after that I'm going to read Acts, and then I'm going to read St. Paul, and I'm going to go back and read Genesis. You can kind of do whatever you want. It's your Bible, and it's your relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, I do really love the Bible in a Year podcast. We're just about to start, you know, we just started a new year, so even if you start today, you'd only be 11 days behind. Listen to two episodes a day and you're caught up super fast. As of recording this, I'm on day 139 and I started January 1st of 2021. So I'm just, my goal is to finish by the end of 2022 and that's okay. But listening once a day and being in God's Word is really, really phenomenal. There's other ways to access this through like form.org has great renditions of all four of the Gospels, even listening to the Tan Books Story of the Civilization Bible series, it'll get you there, or even reading your kid's picture Bible, just something to help you on um, start really understanding salvation history and the characters in the Bible, and then, and then, you know, letting some of this sit and on your heart and kind of seep into your soul. And it'll be, you'll be amazed at what times Bible verses will, are pulled out of your soul without you even knowing it. You're like, where did that come from? The first time that happened to me, I was like, wait, I just recalled the Bible. And I didn't try to memorize it or anything. It was just something I had read. But, but the Spirit does that. And it's really cool when it happens. It's because it's God speaking to you, you know? So... <laughs> That was a lot, and you might be like, oh my gosh, Laura, I'm so overwhelmed. This is so many things. I don't know where to start. Here's the thing. Don't start with it all, obviously. I mean, you could. You could just, like, rewrite your whole life as of today and, and add a million things. But what I suggest you do, and the way that I had done it, because this is stuff that I have built up over many years, right? I've been almost doing YouTube almost four years. And so what I suggest is to just pick one thing. Pick one thing that you're going to work on this week. There's a lot I gave you. So just pick one thing and ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, what what do I need to start with? Maybe maybe you live down the street from a mat, from a church, and you literally could go to daily mass every day or twice a week. Maybe start there. And what you will do is you will find that as you start with the one thing, it will snowball and other things will come up. Like say you go to mass every day and you bring along some spiritual reading or you bring along your Bible and you get there five minutes early and you spend a little bit of time in God's word before, before mass starts. Or you start going to adoration and you do the same thing, but you also bring along some formal prayers. And it, you'll see that it just, it will snowball in an abundance of grace and beauty and goodness and truth and your life will be forever changed. I'm going to warn you about a couple things. One, there may be spiritual warfare. The devil does not want you to go down this road. He's very happy with you being attached to some venial sin or 
or mortal sin if that's the case, which I pray it's not. Um, and he might cause some rumblings. He might cause some desolation. He might cause a little bit of whatever. Um, if you've gone to confession and you're in a good state, you're in a state of grace, there are ways to be combat the devil. We are in a spiritual battle. If you think you're not, you're fooling yourself. I do have a video and a blog post where I talk through Father Ripperger's book on deliverance prayer. So it is something to think about, but you don't need to be afraid. You just keep walking in faith. And a lot of times if you're new to this journey, God will kind of wrap you in Mother Mary's mantle and protect you while you're getting your feet wet until you're confident and then he might pull the rug out. <laughs> and that's okay too. Remember also that God's grace is sufficient. He knows who you are destined to be. So do not compare your spiritual walk with others at all. Think about being in a tunnel and it's you and Jesus. The comparison game is real. It's real even in the Catholic world. All the saints are so different and so unique and that's why it's a really beautiful thing to read the saints because you start getting an idea that, okay, they're really different. And so my spiritual relationship with God is possibly going to look a lot different than other people. And that's why it's important to stay in tune with him and to ask him what he wants of you and not to look at what other people are doing, even if you want to have some kind of goal. And remember, again, on YouTube and Instagram, you're seeing a snippet. I tr promise you that is not the majority of how their life goes. As I said in the beginning, I will be forever thankful to Patrick Coffin and his slogan, Be a Saint, What Else Is There? Because truly, what else matters in life but to get to eternity, to be with Jesus Christ forever, and to have eternal bliss? Because this world is our value tears. No joke. So what we're going to do is pray in Ave Maria. Um, I'll put on the screen both the English and the Latin. I always pray the Ave Maria in Latin. We could go into a whole thing about that. Um, I encourage you, if you're new, to explore the videos I have on Catholicism. They, they run a big gamut, and I've gone from being a cafeteria Catholic to now being a traditional Catholic, and there's all videos in between. But we really want to pray, asking Mother Mary to help us for our like run our race, to help us to achieve final perseverance. It's something we should be asking every single day. So let's do that here, and let's also ask her to help us know what it is that we should do next in order to become closer with God. Namani Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Namani Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. I did want to mention that there will be a blog post at my website, whatlauralikes.com, with all this information there with links. And so hopefully you guys go check that out. That should help kind of put all this into a paper format so that if you are more of a reader, then I have that available for you. And with that, you guys, continue to know, love, and serve God. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this is a long video, but... It's such an important topic. We're just at the beginning of the new year. Make 2022 the year where you are going to just run towards God and let the world fall away and just keep your focus on Him. So with that, you guys, Pax Christi. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.